Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher, and this is short subject number 31, entitled, The World's Smallest Boring Head. So here in this beautiful oak fitted case is the smallest boring head that I've ever seen. Never been used. Let's have a little review of it here. I'm not actually going to use it. I just want to show it off and explain a few things. I purchased this beautiful little boring bar a year or two ago and if you want to see where I purchased it and discovered it, watch this video at time mark 21-40 seconds. I have several of these Criterion boring heads and these are 2 inches in diameter as opposed to this little, little beauty being 1 inch in diameter and the boring bars are one-fourth of an inch in diameter that are to be held in this head as opposed to these bigger boring bars which are half inch shank. This Criterion boring head has a three-quarter shank but it's available with different shanks I think at different costs but this is also three-quarter inch in diameter which looks like a little bit of overkill for this size but I'm sure these are available in smaller sizes if you would need it but this gives it a great deal of rigidity now since this is threaded in there's a very stern warning here that was included saying do not stop your milling machine uh, real quickly with the brake because you'll spin it off and believe it or not they suggest using Loctite to hold it on there if you are impatient and are in the habit of using the brake on your milling machine Four little boring bars made out of solid carbide were included in the kit and the largest one here, by the way, they all still have the protective coating on them, the wax coating. I did remove this little blob so I could show you the smallest one. But in review, this is a quarter inch shank and the beauty here is these have flats on the shank which you will not see on the larger ones. But that helps you orient them also. And the smaller ones have 3 16 shanks with these tiny little sleeves or bushings. One is already on there for you to adapt it into the boring head. And there's a little window in the sleeve also so that the set screw can tighten onto the flat. Pretty neat. I looked and looked on the internet trying to find out the capacity of this little boring head. That is, what size holes should it be used to bore and what is the range of it in other words the maximum size as well but here is the smallest boring bar and it fits into a quarter inch hole here so I suspect you can bore holes that are quarter inch and smaller if needed those of you out there that make those little models this would be just beautiful one thing I wanted to show you on the Criterion boring head is that the little dial is incorporated into the head itself but it's very hard to read. It's about 5 eighths of an inch in diameter and one full revolution will move the boring bar 50 thousandths. Let's look at the other one. The little graduated dial for the small boring head is easy to read in that it's one inch in diameter however it is not satin chrome like this one and one full revolution will give you ten thousandths only and each graduation is two tenths of a thousand. Now the beauty here is that this little dial is captive on the wrench so when you're ready to set it you just insert it in the little hole here and make your adjustment and there's a little witness mark right here. So that is how you set it. Then you can pull this off and get it out of the way. Extremely accurate, beautiful little boring head. Now these two holes again are for the boring bar so they can be put in two different positions pretty much like any other boring bar for that matter and here are the set screws to tighten it down. These two set screws allow you to lock the dovetail after you've made your setting. You may or may not be using that 
pretty much the same thing on this one. Since every revolution of the dial only moves the head here with the boring bar ten thousandths, you'll be kind of amazed at this. So watch the dovetail right here as I start to make an adjustment here and as many revolutions as I'm making you will notice that the little dovetail here as it starts peeking its head out is moving very 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 slowly. So you get extremely accurate adjustments because of that and there is a differential screw in there. Let's take a look at that real quickly. I'm not really going to explain it but a differential screw and they call it a lead screw uh, allows extremely fine adjustments. As I back out the screw and right now I'm just using my fingers all of a sudden the dovetail becomes detached from the screw. And there it is. And this is the differential screw. And if you've never seen one of these, it's an interesting device because it's really two threads on one shaft and they are not the same pitch. So coupled together they give you that very fine movement. So the large thread is held into the head itself, into that thread. That's the large thread and the smaller thread goes all the way through and goes into this little thread. And that's how it moves it, uh, in such a fine, fine manner if that's the word to use. Also note the 177 on there and also one inside here so obviously these were hand fitted. I'm not sure how much these cost. I don't think they make them anymore. If anyone has that information on the capacity and the model number and all of that, please put it in the comments because I don't even know what model number this is. These were made in Minnesota and I believe they made more than one model. For those of you who are intrigued by this little differential screw, and that type of screw is used in several devices that you might have around your shop, including if you have a, mic uh, a microscope, sometimes the, uh, the slide below can be adjusted very finely in two axes with this type of thread. If anybody can think of other applications, put that in the comment. But in the follow-up video, which will be number 21, and I've already partially done that, I made a couple differential screws and I'm going to explain that in detail, maybe even a little math on that. So watch for that video if you're interested. Wow, is that ever a nice fit. Amazing. Smooth. Okay, what I want to tell you now is that because a differential screw such as this one does not allow all that much travel. I don't know the exact amount, but you know it's probably an eighth of an inch or less. So you have to make an initial adjustment here as to the size hole that you're going to be boring and get it into the position. Get your boring bar almost to the work and that is when you go ahead and put the screw into place. So I bring the head up against the screw, put that in a few turns and then I will feel it engage. And now the head will not move manually. And the final adjustment made, can you see it moving? But very, very slowly. So there's not a whole lot of travel each time you re-engage the screw. Kind of tricky, but you'll catch on fast. Well, that concludes this short video on the Ramsey Infinity Precision one inch diameter boring head. Hope you liked it and be sure and watch for the following video when available when I talk about differential threads. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. See you next time.